Great. Wonderful evening. Great seeing everybody. People I haven't seen in a while, and it's great to all here. I'd like everyone to just think for a moment about their first encounter with science and society. When did you first encounter science and society? Just try to get an image of that. And we don't have enough time to go do a round robin on that, but that would be terribly interesting, you know? But I'd like to tell you mine. Uh, you know, I grew up in Hoboken, New Jersey, and uh, the, I decided I was a socialist. And uh, the only other socialist I met was uh, a kid from a labor Zionist family, you know? It took me, I think, a year and a half to realize that labor Zionism is not the solution to anything. <laughs> but, when, <laughs> but when I, but, you know, thank God at least I had that, you know? And, uh, you know, McCarthy era, 1960, so what to do? Get on a ferry for a nickel. Come to Manhattan and go to a newsstand. And I went up to it. It was like I think something like buying my first condoms, you know. I went, <laughs> up, I, went up, I went up to the newsstand and I said, "Do you have a copy of uh, Do you have a copy of The Daily Worker?" And the woman said to me, "Sonny, I got just what you need." <laughs> and she took them out, you know, from underneath underneath the counter. So I kept coming back to her for a long time. You know? <laughs> anyway, but, uh, but you know, but it was really a thin newspaper. I mean, in size, but a little thin in content as well. But out of that, there was an ad. And the ad was for the Jefferson Bookstore on, you know, on 17th Street on the inside of Union Square. So I went there. And, oh my God, you know, it's like, you know, you remember the first, somebody said, what, what do we remember? The first of something, the last of something, and all the bad things in between. <laughs> but, but the first, we really remember, that I can remember the books, A.B. McGill, Crisis in Israel. Everybody should read Crisis in Israel today. We would have, you know, it was unforgettable. In any case, and big stacks of science and society, 20. Five cents. I could afford that, you know. So I would buy them, and I would get on the way home. Oh, God, what is this? You know, it's like I was a kid, you know. Jesus Christ. I mean, it really, I was in awe of it. It was like something so extraordinary to me. You know, it was way above my ken. But I did read parts of it. I remember, like, I would read an analysis of Shakespeare. I hadn't read Shakespeare, you know, that type of thing. But I, I was in awe of it. I mean, to me, it was the most extraordinary thing that, that imaginable. And, uh, well, that led to a 52-year love-hate relationship with science and society. <laughs> but we're going to stay positive. <laughs> but what brought me back to science and society big time was in 1980s. And we should all remember her today, and that she's not here physically, but she is present. And what an extraordinary, incredible human being. What a model for us in how to live our lives as what we are. And what a great uh, contributor uh, to science and society. And, uh, but my interest in science and society, uh, to some remarkable extent, had to do with it being a kind of a shard of a great vessel that was smashed in the McCarthy era. This incredible, powerful, in many ways, beautiful vessel that was a tremendous infrastructure within which the working class and progressive people could begin a process of challenging capitalism. And it was smashed to smithereens. And a few shards remained. And one of those shards is science and society. And I knew I couldn't save the Soviet Union, but maybe I could help out science and society in the Brecht Forum, you know? And, uh, and you know, and it, with that, sh it, but you know, it wasn't the only shot, but it was one of the best ones. And some of the ones are shiny, the ones that remain, some that were bigger. But what I got to think about for a second, when I was in Athens and I went to the museums there, you know, it's very shocking, you know, particularly if you go into some of the, some of the galleries, you know, my God, so, oh, they're so beautiful. But in any case, but, you know, but they also have these amphoras and these incredible vases, which really, when you start to look at them, have been reconstructed out of a handful of shards. All the rest, preservationists, have been able to follow the curves of these pieces and reconstruct a magnificent, magnificent urn, a magnificent vessel. 
Now, I'm not suggesting that science and society really has all that much potential, but it does have something that's incredibly powerful. What do we have? What do we have? The main thing we have is capitalism. Marxism is a product of capitalism. I don't know. I heard it from Howard Selsom when I was a kid, but I think it might have been from Engels. I don't know. But he said that, that, that Marxism was the first great intellectual movement that could explain itself. It was able to explain itself, its own existence at a particular time and place. And its creator knew that. And that, that he applied Marxism to Marxism. And capitalism does that. It creates Marxism, and it created every one of us. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for capitalism, because it's so hateful. <laughs> it is, in fact, the system that does, in fact, create its own grave diggers, for sure. So we have capitalism, which is the main thing. We also have our history. We have a wonderful history. We're not starting from scratch. We had something that was very socialistic, if not exactly socialism, that once had a third of the world and allowed the anti-colonial movements to succeed and to have mass parties throughout the world. We had a lot. And this is not something to pick at. You know, we become so oppositional, so critical, instead of spending some time honoring the lives and deaths of millions of people to create socialism. There's a meanness in that. There's a stupidity in that. We have a great history that we need to honor, we need to celebrate, we need to think about. And the last thing we have, and it's all connected, is Marxism. What an astounding construct, an incredible, incredible construct. You know, historical materialism, dialectical materialism, a kind of historicization of, of you know, uh, political economy, all bound up, all interacting in some most amazing, amazing way. But all of it is the ideology of the working class. This is the great gift of the working class to combat religion, to combat bourgeois philosophy, to combat metaphysics, it's the hope and the need of the working class. Science and society is a quarterly, which is about an analysis and study based on Marxism. And when, and when I read Mark, uh, Science and Society, and when I continue to read Science and Society, what I'm doing it for is to see how does Marxism work? How does it do something? How does it produce an insight? How does it show us something that we otherwise couldn't know? How can it give us a perspective that's not apparent or not available outside of that? Now, I think that what science and society is able to do and able to produce has been limited. And I think that uh, really our opportunity is to do something about that. One, of the, one point I learned when I bought this you know, five, six page newspaper, which had very little, very much, and there were some good things in it. Michael Gold was in there, Jesus Columbus, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't nothing too exciting in certain ways. But there was the ad for uh, the Jefferson Bookstore. There was an ad for uh, the Center of Marxist Studies, not the School of Marxist Studies at Breckford, but an early one. And I went there and I took a course in Marxist philosophy, and Howard Selsom said, quantitative change leads to qualitative change. Oh, wow, you know? I mean, it was like I was reborn, you know? It was like total immersion for a Baptist. I mean, this was unbelievable. Wow, you know, he's right. He was right. And it was using Hegel and putting it on a materialist foundation, which meant that if we could make something bigger, it would not only be bigger, it would be better. It would have some ability to do something, not just because 10 times more, but some synergistic transformation would occur into some synthesis with real potential. So what that means is science and society itself rather than could be, will, will become better simply with it becoming bigger. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed, if you believe in Marxism.
If you don't, what the fuck are you doing here? You know? <laughs> but if, 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 you, if you believe in Marxism, that has to likely be so. Why not? So what I think we need to do tonight, you know, in, in, in celebration of the 75 years, is to get 75 subscriptions. Now, I love music, and I was very proud of uh, Gerald's point on oh, Everything, I love the whole thing, but I was counting heads. We already have 11 subscriptions, and I was counting heads, and if everyone in this room bought one subscription, we got the 75 subscriptions. Now, if you don't know anybody, you have no friends or anything that would like a subscription, get new friends. That's very important. <laughs> That's very important. You know, find some new friends, really. What are you hanging, who are you hanging out with? This is ridiculous. But in any case, but, so, but in the meantime, you could borrow somebody else's friends. We have names. You know? <laughs> you know? And I'm, I've matched, you don't know, I've matched up at least 10 people. You know, husbands wind up hating you. But in any case, but in any case, we will match you up. Don't worry. You know? So the main point really is about money. It's, we got, thank you to Gilbert, thank you for one of our best supporters, Jody, all supporting Tobogan. We're my bondsman from Tobogan. And, uh, my paisan from Hoboken, and, and the idea here is that we've got an introductory subway for 38 bucks, it's real large, 36. but 36, what, better yet, very good, and we have a student rate, but like you can't just think I'm a student of life, no, 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 that's not good, like, you have to have like an actual ID, no bullshit here, no, it's like an actual ID, and for, you for $15 if you can get a subscription, but what we want you to do is to fill out what I would like to do is to give a check, frankly. I think that would be, let's, you know, that's to be real, because we can do this if we have the money. And we can match up names with money. Uh, there's someone that, that did donate five subscriptions. That's right. Thank you. There was, uh, there was somebody that, that, uh, that already done three subscriptions, two subscriptions, a couple of people done two. Now, if, we know if everyone here you know, made one subscription, we would, we would reach our goal. We know not everybody here is going to do that. So some people have to do more than one. Like two. And then, you know, and we have it then. So I, I think that what would be very appropriate for this evening, this really wonderful special evening that's not going to happen again soon, is that we really fulfill a goal that was arrived at, uh, that what we need to do tonight is to get 75 new subscriptions to science and society so that we can make a bigger contribution to building the kind of movement to combat what looks like some kind of imminence of fascism and confusion on, in our own ranks and, and that we can succeed and have progress and, and make our own lives more worthwhile uh, through these efforts. So please, you know, check so Who do we make a check out to? Uh, the Science and Society. Society. The Science and Society. How much is it for one again? It's for one, it's 36. 36 or 35? 36. 36. 36 bucks. And more appreciate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.